Okay, so like I was saying, this three and a half year period, I can't believe I didn't see it before because this is possibly the most compelling three and a half year period I've ever seen so far. So, okay, so let's look at the calendar. Um, right now we're in that 70th anniversary of the establishment of the beast. Right now, this right here, the 70th anniversary. Um, it started August 21st. And during this anniversary, we have some major watch dates. So most of us are aware of the fall feasts, like Trumpets, Atonement, Sukkot, which are always watch dates every year. But in the last four years, if you've been watching my videos for at least a year, then you'll know that there's been this pattern of vision fulfillments that have been happening in the fall season from September to December that seem to um, highlight that time period for some reason because it's been fulfillments that have happened year after year. Some of these visions I uploaded to YouTube prior to their fulfillments. Um, I mean, I had the visions prior to their fulfillments on it, and um, I think it's just this one right here that I uploaded prior to these right here. But everything that happened the years after that, of course, we were already talking about before watching those dates. So um, you can go watch the videos if you want. And it's in the playlist, Proof the Visions Come True, on my main channel page. I still have this vision right here that I uploaded. Um, and then I have some of these others as well. So you can go watch that playlist if you want. I'll try to remember to link it below. But in September 2011... Right here, I saw a vision of Jesus stomping and clapping to the song, We Will Rock You. I know it sounds strange, but it was something he knew I would understand as a battle cry, I'm sure. And a few days later, um, Occupy Wall Street began. And then the following year, on that same watch period, it ended up being the 1335th day that landed on the Feast of Trumpets. And in 2013, you might remember, we were specifically watching that date. And that's when the DC shooting happened. So um, that's another watch date right here, September 16th through the 18th. Um, I don't know if the pattern will continue for a fourth year, but I guess we'll find out soon. Um, and then Monday through Wednesday of next week, is also a watch because it's 43 days after Isis destroyed the tomb of Jonah. I think it's, I think that's what it is, or 40. Um, it, it's according to the, the story of Jonah. It's, um, he goes for a three day journey and all of this stuff. I explain, I have another video that I explain, explain it in, but anyway, um, that's why that's a watch period right there. I don't know if, if that destruction of the tomb of Jonah was the sign of Jonah. Um, but again, that's the timeline according to that story ends right here. Um, and it's also a full moon and they seem to do things according to the phases of the moon. We've been watching that as well. So um, so that's a watch. That's a watch the following week. And then we have the standard Feast of Trumpets happening the week after that, which starts on the evening of the 24th until the evening of the 26th. And that's always a watch date every year right here. And that start, uh, that Feast of Trumpets on the standard Jewish calendar is also the start of the 10th month of the multitude. And the multitude calendar is something I'm looking at this year because if you remember the new moon, this year occurred on January 1st, which is unusual, and it converged the true 10th month of the biblical calendar with the first month of the Gregorian calendar. And that was interesting because of the implications in the text that the bride will be taken in the 10th month. And also the indications about the escape in the first month. So the fact that the 10th month and the first month were, was converging was was interesting. So here, um, these are some of the scriptures. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven um, or the place that he's preparing 
is like a marriage and those that were bidden refused to come. Therefore, he said, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits of the kingdom of heaven. And this is very similar to the story of the bride Esther. So the, in the story of Esther, it says the queen Vashti was invited to a feast and refused. So Esther was crowned bride instead in the 10th month. So that seems to be symbolic of what some call the Gentile bride, which is those that will escape. We know that's the multitude of all tribes and nations. So those who will escape the coming tribulation will not be those who were bidden or those who were invited. It will be those bringing forth the fruits of heaven. So because it's a Gentile bride, who we know from other study is the multitude right here, the multitude of all tribes and nations, otherwise known as the bride, then this story may indicate that the escape will happen in the 10th month. I'm not saying it does for sure. I'm just saying it may indicate that, that the escape will happen in the 10th month. So the question is, does it refer to the 10th month of the biblical calendar or the standard Jewish calendar or the Gregorian Gentile calendar? Because remember, the standard Jewish calendar, they don't follow the actual biblical calendar anymore. They have their own thing going on. And it's slightly different from, from how the, the Bible itself actually says to, to follow the calendar. So um, I have a video on that. It's, it's below. So we have three different calendars now. We have the true biblical calendar, the way it says to follow it. Then we have the standard Jewish calendar. And then we also have the Gregorian calendar. So the question is, is it the t which 10th month is it? Well... Since it's a Gentile bride, maybe it's the Gentile calendar that it occurs on. We don't really know, but it's a, it's a thought. Um, and it's unusual that the Gentile calendar started on a new moon this year because the new we know the, the, the biblical calendar starts on the new moons or the first crescent. Um, and it converges with the, the, that new moon on the Gregor starts the Gregorian calendar. And it converges with the biblical calendar this year. So it was the 10th month that was starting on the true biblical calendar on the same day the first month was starting on the Gentile or multitude calendar, quote unquote. We call it multitude because that's who the bride is. And the word translated in Revelation 11 as, as Gentile also means multitude. So the 10th month of the biblical calendar starting on the first month of the multitude calendar that's what happened this year it's unusual so later this month on the standard jewish feast of trumpets the 10th month of the multitude calendar will start so i just thought that was interesting because we're following the new moons you know what i mean the new moon started because the new moon landed on the very first day of the Gentile calendar, then we continue following the new moons and the 10th month of that Gentile calendar would land exactly on the standard Jewish Feast of Trump. So I just thought, you know, I just, I, who knows? Nobody knows, but it's just something that it was an alignment that happened. And it says that the multitude bride will escape in the 10th month, or it seems to indicate that that the multitude bride will escape in the 10th month. So maybe it's referring to the 10th month on the multitude calendar. You know what I mean? It's just a thought. Um, but then again, that could also mean October because October is technically the 10th month of the, of the Gregorian calendar. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, okay, so um, that date right there is also the true biblical date of Moses's second descent, which represents a revealing. So that's another watch date because we know we are watching that second descent. Remember in, in um, 2013, prior to the Pope making his announcement of resignation, which was a huge event because that was the seventh king resigning to bring in the eighth king. We know the Bible says the eighth king is the final one. So that was a huge event and we were watching that date prior because it was the second descent of Moses on that timeline we were looking at. So that's why I have the second descent of Moses right here. This year, the true second descent of Moses lands 
exactly on the standard Jewish Feast of Trumpets. So that's that's a watch date. And that's the standard Feast of Trumpets is a common watch date for the rapture among Christians every year. And then on the first day of standard Sukkot, right here, we have a lunar eclipse, which is part of the lunar tetrad. That's rare. A lot of people are watching that. But we also will have the draconid meteor shower, which is described in Revelation 12. Right here, it says in 2014, it'll be peaking October 7th and 8th here. So that draconid meteor shower was part of the fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign that occurred in 2012. It was a specific celestial configuration from our perspective on Earth that only happens in September or October, but it's very rare and will not occur again for another 500 years. And it occurred exactly on the true biblical date of trumpets in 2012. So it fulfilled the, it actually fulfilled the appointed sign of trumpets. So this year can be thought of as the third trumpet. You see what I mean? The first trumpet was the rare sign that occurred on the true appointed time of trumpets in 2012. And the third trumpet will be this year in 2014. So October 16th is the anniversary of that. It's not the true appointed time of trumpets this year, but the anniversary of the Gregorian date. So I just thought it was interesting. The anniversary of that lands exactly on the standard feast of Sukkot this year which is a high watch date for those paying attention to the lunar tetrads that started this year the first one occurring on Passover and the second one will occur on the first day of Sukkot this year and the reason the anniversary watch of that 2012 Revelation 12 sign the reason that starts on October 7th is because Revelation 12 says the dragon stood before the woman and it cast its tail of stars to the earth. So that was the draconid meteor shower that occurred one week before the celestial sign of the woman in heaven. The draconid meteor shower occurs in October every year. But like I said, the sign itself, the celestial configuration that Revelation 12 describes, it last occurred in the year 1570. And it won't occur again until 2454. So it's, it's really rare. And the third anniversary of that will start exactly on the first day of Sukkot this year and end on day eight of Sukkot right here. So I just, I corrected the, the days right here. This is actually the seventh day of Sukkot and this is the eighth day of Sukkot. So that anniversary of that sign occurs on the eighth day of Sukkot this year, standard Sukkot. And the whole watch period, like I said, it, it starts the meteor, draconid meteor shower, which was the first part of that sign in 2012. It starts right here on the first day of Sukkot, which is the same day of the lunar eclipse. And then that watch period ends on the last day of Sukkot, which was the day the sign itself actually happened. I just think that's so bizarre. Interesting to say the very least. That that anniversary again, the third year from that fulfillment of the sign of trumpets, it's occurring. That anniversary is occurring exactly on the standard feast of Sukkot, Sukkot this year. And um, the next watch starts on that same day. And um, that's been a watch period since the fulfillments of this vision started in 2011. So the video is still on YouTube. I saw the vision right here and I uploaded it on October 13th, I think it was, 2011. And it consisted of four things. First, a snowstorm, then a power outage, and then a... Uh, hurricane okay i'm running out of time i gotta start the next part the link is below